What's going on everyone? I'm Jaren. I've been a little bit under the weather, but I wanted to take some time to talk to you guys about Argyle. Here we follow the story of a reclusive author who writes espionage novels about a secret agent and a global spy syndicate until she soon realizes that the new novel that she's writing begins to mirror real world events in real time. So over the last several months, every time I went out to see a brand new movie, this trailer would pop up. I was vibing with it at first, and then I would get easily irritated having to see it every goddamn time. And eventually, I knew they were going to make a second trailer, and as the date grew closer, they didn't get one. And I thought to myself, hey, maybe it's a spy movie, they probably have a lot of twists and turns, and probably trying to keep a tight lid on it, and soon enough... I called it. Now with the StatCast Ensemble and coming from the director who did Kick-Ass, X-Men First Class, and the three Kingsman movies, I was definitely excited to show up for this one. I got to see this movie with my best friend slash film critic Aaron Medeiros and my other best friend slash actor slash filmmaker Celine Hobby. And out of all the three of us, we seem to have all different opinions about it. I, funny enough, had somewhat a little more entertainment and fun out of it than they did. Director Matthew Vaughn has just been on a non-stop trend with the spy genre, and I give him props for experimenting. Now, I've seen every 007 slash James Bond entry, and throughout the years, it's had a lot of different flavors, even the controversial ones. Now... It had balls to swim at the deep end, but I feel like that's what Argyle was going for. You know, balls deep. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was terrible. Compared to various spy movies over the years, we have come to condition ourselves with familiar structures and tropes that the modern age has deemed marketable. Now, in order to pay homage with writer Jason Fuchs and Vaughn in the directing chair, they were able to take a lot of the amalgamated highlights of old school spy movies and put them on display here. And I gotta say, there's a little bit of charm to the corniness, to the plot twists, to the deception, and it seems a little over excessive and a little over the top, but I feel like that's gonna either alienate or hook your audience in for the first 30 minutes. Getting into some of the talent here, Bryce Dallas Howard. Now, ever since I was introduced to her in M. Night Shyamalan's The Village and Lady in the Water, I wanted to see this girl in more star-leading roles. Yeah, she appeared in a lot of blockbusters and directed several things over the years, but she was never really embraced as the leading star uh, up until maybe that one Black Mirror episode, which was refreshing for me as a viewer to follow her in the narrative. Now, she is listed in the cast as the second leading character, but here she is the star. As the character of Ellie Conaway, she has many layers to herself, to her character as a writer, and how she envisions and processes her work. Especially when, for example, she's pit into real danger, and she just keeps flashing back and forth on what the real Argyle would do in a situation like this. Then we have Sam Rockwell as Aiden Wilde. Now this is an incredible actor with range. Throughout the years, I've seen him do comedy, I've seen him do drama, and I've seen him play charming. I've seen him play scummy douchebag. I've seen him play the action villain. Wait, villain and douchebag are the same thing. Then I was introduced to a little movie called Mr. Right, and he proves that he could do action hero. Long and behold, he was able to flex that wit, that charm, those badass fight moves, and I'm not trying to typecast him here, but I would love to see Rockwell in more roles just like this one. And I even love the back and forth banter and chemistry between him and Dallas Howard. And then we have Agent Argyle himself, Henry Cavill. Now, this is probably his fourth film as a spy. Five if you want to count the new Guy Ritchie movie coming out later this year. But with his collaboration with Matthew Vaughn, I personally feel like they could have done an actual 007 movie together by now. Shit, he could be in the next Kingsman movie if all I care. I just thought it was very unfortunate for the cards that he was dealt with when it came to working with Warner Brothers and I'm just glad that he's still getting a lot of work and especially the spotlight as the suave and talented badass. Especially I love what he brought to the role for Argyle and I love how he was able to perform especially alongside the talents of Bryce Dallas Howard, John Cena and Dua Lipa. Due to the fact that this movie had a very stacked cast, it was 
unfortunate that not every star was utilized to their full potential with the talents of Sophia Butella, John Cena, Ariana DeBossi, Samuel Jackson, and Dua Lipa. They had flashy introductions but were play off more like cameos. They just didn't have too much in the script to work with. And compared to the second string American agency that shows up in act two of Kingsman the Golden Circle, it just wasn't enough screen time. Going back to what I said, that this is not your typical modern espionage flick, this movie had a lot of exposition. Now, this puts story first before action, and I respect that, but the pacing is all over the place, it's messy, and the narrative is riddled with plot holes. Once we roll over to the second act, we unfold a plethora of plot reveals and twists that just seems to come after one after the other. Some of the reveals were shocking, quirky, and clever, but the rest of the other surprises became so overwhelming and over the top that you really got sick of it. I mean, every twist came with an explanation which felt the pacing come to a complete halt, and that structure just kept repeating itself over and over again that you just felt that runtime. You felt how long the movie was, and when you think that the film was coming to a close it would just kind of keep going and I just felt the collective groan and sighs happen in my auditorium it was kind of sad the other thing and I swear this trend with Matthew Vaughn Andy Muschietti and Ridley Scott needs to pump the brakes because the CGI mixing and blending with the practical effects and action is starting to feel like oil and water visually it had its moments to be amazing, especially with films in its caliber of Kick-Ass and the th last three Kingsman movies, but here, it's obvious. The train scene managed to be my favorite sequence of the entire movie. Other than that, after Expendables 4, I cannot stand at how fake a background looks like with our main character standing in what obviously should be a stage but they could have easily gone on location for like it's easy to see the little aura and you can tell that it's a blue and green backdrop Ugh! on my first impression the third act had action that wowed me but on retrospect it was very looney tunes it was very goofy like a video game cutscene and i was just thinking to myself man that was cool for the moment but that was really stupid Overall, I am wowed by Vaughn's vision when it comes to cinema, but I'd rather watch the last two Kingsman movies before I choose to watch this one again. Again, I was entertained by this. I don't completely regret my time with this. I think it's far from perfect, but it is fantastical and a breath of fresh air that I'm usually not used to, but glad I got to check it out. Guys, that's all I got to share about that movie. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, I wouldn't pay for it. <laughs> um, I mean, if it's still playing in your theaters, please, I mean, just go out to support movies if you want. I'm sure there's better things to watch out there, but it's also available to rent on digital, I believe. Um, yeah, again, if you can watch it for free, amazing. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to hear me talk some movies. Look forward to more reviews. I am Jaren Ugbanawag, and I will see you guys at the movie theaters. Take care.